And that's a perfect segue into talking about the Cardinals. Um, because I still don't know exactly what the plan is. We nothing's really changed. The Cardinals starting pitching is still terrible. I could I could go down. I mean, at some point, like I, I could talk about it until I'm blue in the face. But at some point, there's nothing more to say. I mean, I know they've been doing better lately, and the Central sucks. I mean, we 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 alluded to the standings, but the Brewers are also 27 and 24, leading the Central with a negative 21 run differential. So they've given up more runs than they've scored. And if you look around, I mean, does everybody just suck now, Mike? That's kind of my point. Like, you look at the NL, there's nine teams out of 15, right? If I'm doing my math right, that have a negative run differential. And then Atlanta's killing it. The Dodgers are killing it. Um, Heck, even our Cubs and Cardinals have a positive run differential. The Pirates have a positive run differential. But... There's a lot of bad teams, it's seemingly, or yeah. average so-so teams. And the and the Oakland Athletics, right, who are Las Vegas bound here in the next several years, right? And the Kansas City Royals, like, these are teams that not only are they not good, but they don't rank highly in the prospects. At least Kansas City doesn't. So what is the plan? And, and going back to the Cardinals, like, are we are we really just gonna do the same old thing? I the, I posted the video yesterday, same old, same old. So to recap this week in Cardinals baseball, all right, on on Sunday or on Saturday rather, uh, May twentieth, the Cardinals gave up five runs um, to the Dodgers, right, and that was Miles Michaelis pitched pretty good. That was one of Michaelis's better outings. I think Michaelis has uh, solidified him, or solidified himself as our ace, which is okay, whatever. <laughs> Sunday, May 20, 21st, five runs. Monday, six runs given up. Tuesday, May 23rd, five runs given up. Wednesday, May 24th, 10 runs giving up, given up. Six of those by Steven Matz, who went four innings again. And only struck out two people, gave up 11 hits in four innings. The Steven Matz experience needs to be over with and done because he's 0-6. I don't even want to know what his ERA is, but I'm bringing it up right now. His ERA is 5.272. Uh, I don't I don't know what. I, I mean, as, uh, the only thing that I can really think of is John Mosellock's stubbornness because he, he signed this guy. And it's just, it's, it's over. I'm sorry. Like we know what we have in Steven Matz. Now he started 10 games this year. That's a big enough sample size and he's killing your ball club. He's I'm sorry. Like if you're going to send Jordan, Wa I know. And I know Jordan Walker's the top prospect, right? If you're going to send Jordan Walker down because he's not performing well, then you need to do, you need to be consistent and do the same thing with some of your higher price free agents. Like send them to the bullpen, give Libertor a chance, which Libertor started last night, did all right. That might not be the long term solution either, but at least it's not killing you like Stephen Matz is killing you. Let's go on. So ten runs. So you've seen a theme here. Oh look, is this? Wait a minute. A quality start by Miles Michaelis. Uh, Michael has probably had his best outing of the season on Thursday, May 25th, give up no runs in a two to one ball game. The Cardinals, Mike, the Cardinals played in a two to one ball game. None of this 10 to five, eight to five, six. To, they, on Thursday, we finally saw a quality start. Holy, holy cow. Wow. Is that the first That's one of the year? Is that, I don't, what, it feels like it. It feels uh -huh. like it two days ago on Thursday. And then yesterday uh, was M Matthew Libertor day. So, and he get, you know, looking at the stats here, he, uh, as I'm looking at him, maybe five uh, typical Cardinal start. So we might as well have the young guy doing it. Five innings, four, 
runs given up. Sounds about right. Sounds like a Cardinal starter. Sounds like he fits right in. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm just, I don't know what to say, man. Like I know I'm, uh, I'm not expecting Moselock to go out and trade for a starting pitching pitcher tomorrow. I clearly people on this show are probably sick and tired of me saying the Cardinals need starting pitching. That's obvious. Everyone knows it, but you just wonder when is Moselock going to wake up and, and, I mean, who knows? Maybe he's on the phone relentlessly, but some part of me thinks that he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll just keep on trotting Steven Matz out there. That's the move that needs to happen. Steven Matz, they need to move him back to the bullpen or something because like you can't, you just can't have like in a, in a, well, in what's going to be a close, like least interesting division, maybe aside from the AL central and all of baseball and the NL central, like you can't have guys that are just you when you t send them out there it's like oh god <laughs> you know like you know like, well you can't do that you won't do that on a high school baseball team you won't do that in little league well why do the cardinals keep doing it you know like it doesn't i don't understand mike so they need to do something and then again we have this weird tyler o'neill injury his lower back's been killing him for like three weeks now. And they're, he's scheduled to come back. Like, what are they going to do with Tyler O'Neill? Because his values hit the tank. What are they going to do with Dylan Carlson? Because I'm assuming he's going to, if he comes back, he's going to be at the major league, at the major league level. They need starting pitching. I, I, it makes too much sense that those, one of those two guys, maybe both of them could be involved in a trade. The Cardinals have, I mean, just all these prospects. I mean, I was listening to the the Cardinals. I think it's STL Cardinals Nation. I, I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong, but he does a great job of covering the Cardinals prospects. And one of the prospects he talked about was Michael McGreevy and how he's doing really well. And Gordon Graceffo's hurt, but we have Tink Hentz. I mean, we have the number one. I mean, prospect in all of baseball and Jordan Walker who are probably not going to trade but th the point is this like like I keep saying and I, to say it till I'm blue in the face we have all of these prospects on a win now team that aren't helping you win now so in my opinion and I know it's been my opinion for three years we need to go out and see what the White Sox want for Dylan Cease we need to go out and see you know Shane Bieber pitched last night he pitched okay uh, only struck out two batters. So I don't know. I don't know if Shane Bieber's the answer. I don't know if he's elite, but at least he's not Steven freaking Matz. Right. Right. So, yeah. And so that I think, and I don't know. I just, I don't really have much faith in Mose Moselock to make a, you know, a, a, a move. So I don't, I don't exactly know what I want him to do because the only, the two moves that he's made that, have just been excellent moves has been the Nolan Ardano trade and the Paul Goldschmidt trade. And he's, you know, he's, he's hanging his reputation on those two moves for sure, because everything else has been kind of a disaster. So I, I don't know, Mike, I, I think the Cardinals are going to win the division by default, just like they do every year. And then they're going to say, oh, look at what we did. Boy, oh boy, what a great job we've done. We've won 86 games and we've won the Central. And that now you're matched up against the Dodgers or now you're matched up against the Braves. And good luck with that because you're well, not even in the same. You're not even in the same league as those teams, man. I mean, and I know, we, and I know, we just beat the Dodgers, but in the the playoffs is a completely different animal. Right. I mean, hasn't this been St. Louis's story the last couple of years? Like, you got, you know, you're, hey, we won the division, we won the division, yeah, and got swept out of the playoffs. Year oh three, oh three, year, oh one, oh year. one. I mean, it's just the same thing year after year, right? Yeah, I think so, the, the last time the Cardinals advanced, I remember they. I can't remember what year it was, but they made it to the NLCS. I think it was maybe 2019 because that was the year the Nationals won the World Series. I think it was. And then they got swept in the NLCS. And yeah, I mean, ever yeah. since then, it's been like one and done in the playoffs the last 
three, four years, you know, either you're not making the playoffs or you're getting bounced first around the playoffs. And that's because, you know, Wainwright's get gotten up there. They don't have a legitimate starter that can, you know, they signed Steven Matz. That's not working out. They, I mean, Dakota Hudson didn't work out. I mean, there's just a lot of starters that they've had that just haven't worked out. And you just need to admit that there's a problem. Uh, and I'm, you know, and if Mos Mosaic came out tomorrow and said, Hey, like, yeah, we're, you know, our starting, we understand our starting pitching has, hasn't been very good. And we're working on, uh, trying to alleviate that problem. Then I would say, hooray for you. You've admitted there's a problem. Like, but right now I, I really believe they're like, Oh yeah, like we'll figure it out. Like the, the, we have, we have some really good pitchers on this staff guys. It's like, no, you don't. Like you have some, but not enough, not the right ones. So just, I just, the first step needs to be, we need to get, we need to punt Steven Matz to the bullpen is what we need to do. So there you go. That's my Cardinals report. Uh, <laughs> Cardinals week in review. We need to punt Steven Matz to the bullpen because yep. if, if we can send our number one prospect down because he's struggling and we can do the same thing with Steven Matz, except we can send him to the bullpen. Now, when you talk about your number one prospect struggling, it's interesting to me because I recently saw a headline about how Jordan Walker's tearing it up at AAA again. And when I look at his game logs at AAA, like he had five plate appearances, four at bats, no hits, um, struck out once. Um, that was on the 26th. On the 25th, he had two hits and five and four at bats. Uh, on the 24th, but here's here's the interesting part to me. He did have a string of games there where he had multiple hits, um, kind of in the mid the 19th, 20th, 21st of May, and there I guess when they were playing Atlanta in the AAA club. But the interesting thing to me about Hicks is that you've got a guy who's 21 years old, and according to fan graphs, he's blocked by who? Nolan Arenado is what it says. So they're yeah. trying to shift him to become a outfielder. Okay, so at what point do you go AARP? It's time to get something for somebody else. Because, you know, Morrell at least is now again playing in the majors. Um, Walker is arbitration eligible in what? 20, 2026. Oh, yeah, not for a long time. Yeah, yeah, so you've got him for a while, and you have three minor league options on him yet. But um, it's, I th just think it's interesting because, to me, Jordan Walker and Christopher Morrell are very similar players. Like, you know, you, I know Walker's the number one prospect. We never really heard about Christopher Morrell as a prospect. You know what I mean? It's like he seems to bounce back and forth between AAA and 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 the, and the club. And what what is where's he at on a prospect list? We don't, you know, he's usually not included in those conversations along with Pete Crow Armstrong and Brennan Davis and Miguel Amaya and you know guys like this that are our prospects. Even Matt Mervis, right, as a prospect. Christopher Morrell, I I don't hear that term used with him often, you know. Um, and he's 23 years old. So, you know, I guess in a sense, as long as we've got him up there playing, if we have a long-term plan to keep him as part of our club, then I'd rather have him playing against major league pitching and showing us what he can do there. Like they had Jordan Walker doing earlier in the season, the Cardinals did, but, um, you know, when, when do you call him back up with your, I mean, cause you've got a log jam in the outfield. Uh, well, the Cardinals it's, a, it's a mess, man, because I mean, just listing off all the outfielders that, you know, I mean, we talked about it on last the last show. I mean, you look at the the percent. I mean, you're complaining about the card or the Cubs or rather their percentage. You look at the percentages of players playing positions. It's a heck of a lot more stable than the Cardinals. I mean, the like I think we broke down and I can bring it up right now that the Cardinals like their top player in right field or the player that's played the most in right field is Jordan Walker. And it's still Jordan Walker, 29%. He's played in right field and he's at triple a right now. 
Tyler O'Neill's 35% has played. So that means 35% of the games he's played in left field and he's on the injured list. Dylan Carlson has played 35% of the games in center field. He's on the injured list right now. So you just look at the percentages and it's like Tyler O'Neill, Lars Newtbar, Jordan Walker, Brennan Donovan, Alec Burleson, Juan Yapez, Oscar Mercado. Like, so you have one, two, three, and then throw Tommy Edmond in there because you got to play Nolan Gorman because like, I'm going to talk about Nolan Gorman here in a little bit. There was an actually, an, actually an article written about Nolan Gorman on MLB that claims he's one of the top three hitters in all of baseball. Mm-hmm. And which Nolan Gorman, you cannot, I don't care against left-handers, right-handers, you know, ambidextrous hitter or pitchers, <laughs> like pitchers that throw him between their legs. I don't care. That guy needs to be in the lineup every, every day because he's been amazing. I think he got his 40th RBI uh, here, like in the last game, 40 RBIs already um, making a real case. Uh, honestly, as, as an all-star, um, I don't know if you could throw him in the MVP conversation, but he's been that good. So now that may, and then now Paul DeYoung's playing great. So that makes it even more complicated. Right. And then, so, so you, you need to find a spot now for Tommy Edmond or is Tommy Edmond a utility guy? See, this is why they need to make a trade. And then like, so let's, let's just go with the fact that you've got to play Paul DeYoung because you can't take him out of the lineup. You have to play Nolan Gorman at second base because you can't take him out of the lineup. Sometimes you got to use the DH for Contreras because apparently you don't trust him to catch or sometimes, but you gave him a big deal for him to, you know, catch. Uh, you have obviously Goldschmidt, Arnato. So that means that Kisner is going to be catching sometimes and you have three outfield spots and one of them is going to be for Newt Bar. So you have to figure out what you're going to do with the other two, right? So Donovan is probably going to play more times than not. And Tommy Edmonds probably going to play more times than not, but then enter Dylan Carlson and Tyler O'Neill and Juan Yapez, and you know, and Alec Burleson, I might've missed up and said Burleson instead of Donovan, but that's how confusing it is. Like there's just so much here. Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, and that's not even, I'm not even mentioning Jordan Walker, you know, he's not even in the, the picture. So it's like, it's just, there's a log jam at second. Now there's a log jam in the outfield. There's a log jam at DH, you know, especially if you want to give Arnado or Goldschmidt a day off at, in the DH spot, can't really do that as much anymore. If you're going to use Contreras, how they're using Contreras. And if they're going to be, you know, using Gorman the way they're using Gorman, like there's just like so many roster decisions that yeah. need to be made, you know, a trade you would think, needs to be made sooner rather than later, but the Cardinals just seem to be content holding on to all of these prospects and um, whatever. I, 